Hey there, this is Miriam Shulman of The Inspiration Place, and today I'm going to show you how I make this duck painting, so stay tuned. Alrighty, so the first step is, of course, you want to gather supplies. I'm working with an 11 14 inch canvas. I found this fantastic printed napkins. I'm going to be cutting out of Somerset Studio. I'm going to be using some piano music. And then, of course, I need my acrylic paints. For my adhesive, I'm using matte medium. And for the colors, I'm using this Liquitex soft body purple. I'll give you the exact name in the supply list, which I'll let you download so you don't have to worry about taking notes. And then of course, for me, it wouldn't be complete unless I was using my favorite colors, cobalt, turquoise, also green gold. So when I first started out, I didn't quite know what direction I was gonna go and I thought I would just use the color inspiration from the napkins and the colors that I showed you to choose my different pieces. But as I went through the magazine, I became inspired by other things. So I discovered the work of this artist, Jesse Chorley. Actually, I'm not sure if it's Corley or Chorley, but I'm completely in love with it. And she had these fabric bunnies. And since it's kind of, uh, well, right now I'm filming this in March and I'm thinking spring, I'm th thinking maybe Easter. I thought they would add a lot of charm to this piece. Now, for those of you who are worried about copyright infringement, don't get prickly. I worry about it too. And it's really just a layer. You barely see the other artist's work peeking out. And I tend to choose uh, art that I can completely transform. So that's why I was attracted to the stitched art because I'm transforming a photograph of stitches into a collage artwork. Now, I also wanna point out that somewhere along the line, I did switch from the matte medium to the soft gel matte medium because I was having trouble getting my pieces to stick. So, you know, the matte medium should be able to work, but it wasn't working for me. So it's basically the difference between the two. If you don't have experience with it, it's kind of like the difference between using Elmer's glue and Elmer's paste. The gel is more like a paste and the matte medium is more like your traditional white glue. Next, I'm getting more of that purple out again. It's actually called uh, light violet, and it's a little bit lighter than perhaps it looks on camera. And I'm just using it to paint over any th spots that I missed on the sides of the canvas and putting little pieces of bright color in the middle. And you're gonna see that in the next step, I'm gonna make everything very cohesive. So it's really not gonna matter that I have all these mismatched colors. All right, for the next part, my idea is to, it's kind of like a whitewash, except mine's gonna be a tinted whitewash. I'm putting the purple, I'm putting in Titan Buff, I'm mixing it all up. I probably could have kept using more Titan Buff, I didn't have enough. So then I put in some titanium white, mixed that all up, added some acrylic glazing fluid, and that is what I'm gonna cover my entire canvas. Now, I found that this was a little bit more opaque than I had planned, so I am putting I put in more glazing fluid to try to make it a little bit more transparent, and I do plan on pulling some of this back now with alcohol on a wipe, so you'll see me do that. All right, and as usual, I'm out of the exact supply that I need, so the best thing is alcohol on a tissue. The next best thing is a baby wipe because it has alcohol in it. And I found these uh, disinfectant wipes that my wrestling son uses to clean off his equipment. So I know it has alcohol in it, so that's kind of the same thing. So I'm just pulling back some paint here and there, letting a little green peek through, letting some of those layers peek through, because what I want is the kind of now you see it, now you don't effect with my layering. All right, for the next step, I'm getting out the napkins. And if you want to find these exact napkins online, it's by Caspari, if I'm pronouncing that right. And they're called Imperial Eggs. So they're really Fabergé eggs, but I think they're not allowed to use the trademark name Fabergé. Uh, I think it's trademark. Anyway, a lot of times with these napkins, you think there's only two layers, but trust me, there's always three. So make sure you peel off 
any layer that's not printed. Make sure you only get the topmost layer. Now I don't want to just plop this napkin right down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rip out the big eggs and I'm going to use that on my canvas. Now to glue this on, I'm going to use matte medium with a brush. I did thought I would do more of an all over pattern when I first got these napkins, but um, once I actually took a look at them and because it had that spiral look, I just said I'm just gonna put the eggs on the bottom. And I, I do have an idea how I might use this, incorporate this into my design, into my artwork. I also decided that I'm going to use the eggs and not just the big ones, but all different sizes all the way around the sides of my canvas. I'm gonna put that all the way around. And while you're watching me do that, I have a little favor to ask you. If you've been enjoying this video and wanna see more of my videos, why don't you hit the subscribe button and you can subscribe to my YouTube channel so you can be notified whenever I have a free tutorial just like this one. For the next step, I'm bringing out my favorite colors, cobalt turquoise. By the way, I also like teal. I happen to be out of teal. I'm using a cosmetic sponge, and you can use stencils for this, but I tend to use a lot of texture tools, such as sequined waste and this uh, punch card paper. So all to add lots of texture to my canvas. And some of you may be wondering, why spend all the time with that first layer if you're covering most of it up? And the way I like to think of it, it's kind of like why you put on gorgeous underwear in the morning. So not many people see it, maybe you, maybe your husband, maybe somebody else, but you know it's there. And that's the same idea with all these layers. So they kind of add an empowering element that it's kind of peeking through. You kind of feel that it's there, that you know it's there, and the art knows that it's there. And the duck that's eventually gonna be on this painting, well, guess what, he knows it's there too. Or maybe this is a female duck. I haven't quite figured that out yet. Which one lays the eggs? The females. But it could be the male duck. I don't know. Oh, let me just clarify. I do know that the female duck is the one that lays the eggs. I just meant it could be a male duck standing next to the eggs. Just because there's eggs doesn't mean that he laid them. Oh, never mind. You know what I mean. Just, just so you know that I do know that the women are the ones who, that have the eggs. All right, while I was blabbering, you'll notice that I got out a black gel pen and I put a beautiful frame all the way around. You know, by the way, at this point, I did not know that it was gonna be a duck. I, I kind of thought maybe I should have a bunny, like Easter eggs, but I never quite understood why it was the bunny that delivers the egg, Easter eggs, and the stork delivers the baby. Like why, I don't know, maybe the bunny should deliver the baby and the stork deliver the Easter eggs. And if anybody can explain that to me, obviously I'm, I'm Jewish, so I don't really know all the Easter history, but I do love these eggs. I think they're really beautiful. So uh, at this point, I, I wasn't quite sure what I was putting on. And when in doubt, I always like to stick a border on my artwork or also my journal pages. So this is kind of like when Julia Child pulls the finished souffle out of the oven. I just happen to have a print of one of my watercolor ducks that I am going to add to this canvas. And for those of you who are interested in watercolor painting, I do teach traditional watercolor on my site, theinspirationplace.net, as well as art journaling and wording and lettering techniques. So if you're interested in any of those things, you can come on over to the inspirationplace.net and I have a lot of free resources over there that will help get you started before you invest in any kind of class. So while I am jabbering, I just want to explain that I'm using some gel medium to put the duck on. I could probably get away with using matte medium as well, but I just happen to like using the paste. Now when you're using gel medium, a great thing to do is to take one of those plastic cards and squeegee out. You see how all that extra gel that's coming out the bottom? Squeegee that all out. And actually I just put it right back on to kind of smooth it out. That way hopefully you won't be able to see that I just cut a duck out and slapped it right onto my painting. By the way, this is my watercolor print. I did not steal this from a magazine. This is a print of my watercolor. Okay, so for the grass, I got this other print that I just happened to have lying around. 
It's a watercolor of an egret. Yes, this is my watercolor painting. And what happened was the customer changed her mind about what size she wanted. And it was such a big print that I just didn't have the heart to throw it out. So I figured it would come in handy one day. And looky, here it is. So it's going to take forever if I try to cut out one blade of grass at a time. So what I'm going to do is cut out a fringe. So think about that fake grass fringe you get in your sushi uh, kits, if those of you who buy sushi at the grocery store like I do. So that's what I'm doing here. And I am going to glue that onto my canvas. Now I'm definitely going to be using that soft gel medium to smooth everything out and make sure that everything sticks down. And don't worry about all that white stuff you see. I'm going to cover that up with some of my green gold paint. So that's it. So as I'm finishing up, I just want to give you the link for that free supply list. Those of you who are interested in downloading a list of all the supplies I used, you can try to make your own painting and you can get that at tinyurl.com slash artsy dash duck. So that's tinyurl.com artsy duck. So I'll be emailing that straight to your inbox. You can print it out and have all the supplies so that's it. I hope you enjoyed watching me paint the Imperial Duck and you learned a few tricks and tips and you just got a nice vicarious thrill of watching me paint. Hope to see you at the Inspiration Place. Take care.